beautiful people, this is Kicking With Debs um, slightly differently. I am currently on a use it up uh, or put it in the freezer kick. So I've got lots of things going on today and I thought I'd show you a few of them. I've already cut up some carrots and just brought them to boil, simmered them for a couple of minutes and then put them in ice water and then those have been portioned up and gone in the freezer. I've also cut up some leeks that were getting a bit sad. I've got a risotto going on over here. Let me see if I can do this. Right, so in the silver one, we've got my turkey bones from Christmas that have been in the freezer and I am turning them into stock. Over here, we've got um, leeks that need using and this is a risotto that I'm making with my turkey stock as it cooks. Um, and that's just using up odd bits. I had some odd, um, small amount of arborio rice. I've got some mushrooms in there because I've got lots and lots of mushrooms that need using up. Um, I have also made um, some apple crumbles to give to some friends and neighbors. So let me know if you want any of these recipes or some more ideas and I'll speak to you soon, bye. Hello and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Debs. Now you may notice that the audio doesn't match what my mouth is doing and that's because when we were recording um, we had a bit of problem with the, the audio track. So what we're making today is bread and butter pudding. I've got a loaf of bread which was um, bought reduced so it's got a yellow sticker on and so have my eggs and I've actually got a gluten free loaf today because my parents are going to be visiting and this means that my dad will be able to eat our bread and butter pudding. So I'm using bread, I've got a Pyrex dish here um, and I'll be greasing that in a minute. And then I've got some milk and some eggs, some sugar, some dried fruit, some margarine or butter and some bread. I feel a little bit like I'm on some sort of game show where I'm commentating on someone's video. But anyway, um, I've greased my Pyrex dish and next I'm going to start buttering or margarining my bread. Each slice will have some margarine on and then I'm going to place it into the Pyrex dish with the spread downwards and that will stop it sticking. You'll also notice that when I put my pieces of bread into the dish, I'm going to cut them into diagonals or into little pieces because that helps when you're dishing up the um, finished dish, it means cutting with your knife or your spoon through the dish is easier. So you can see I've just covered the bottom of the Pyrex dish with all the bread without any gaps. If you had any little gaps you can just cut the bread to fit into those spaces. Next up we take our sugar and our dried fruit. I'm just going to sprinkle on maybe half a spoonful, you don't need too much each layer. 
and then follow that with a couple of spoonfuls of dried fruit. I'm using a mixture of raisins and sultanas, but you can use whatever dried fruit you've got. And then basically what we do is we just continue this until you've filled up the whole dish. After the dried fruit and the sugar, I'm gonna put another layer of um, bread spread with margarine, and I'm gonna put that with the spread downwards and then continue bread, sugar, fruit, all the way to the top of the dish. I've got to my final layer of bread on top and I've put the margarine on and put it on top of the dish with the margarine down and then I'm going to put margarine on the top of the bread as well so both sides of the top layer of bread have been margarine and next up I'll be adding the custard mix now what I use is half a pint of milk and two eggs so if you're making a really small one of these with just a few slices of bread and a little, little tiny dish you could use a quarter pint of milk and just one egg or what I'll be doing here I'll be using um, twice the mix so I'll be using a whole pint of milk and four eggs I'll mix that in a measuring jug and to make sure that all the egg is mixed properly into the milk and then I'll pour it on when you pour it on you make sure that you pour it slowly so that the bread has a chance to absorb all the liquid when you're mixing the egg and the milk you can also add some other flavors if you want to you could use some nutmeg or some cinnamon or perhaps a little bit of vanilla extract which just makes it a little bit more interesting and finally when all the liquid has been poured on you can sprinkle just a little bit of sugar on the top which will go crispy and yummy when you cook it and then I'll just let it sit for a, probably 15 or 20 minutes just to make sure that the bread has really absorbed all the liquid and then it will go into a preheated oven which is 180 degrees centigrade or 350 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark 4 and I'll cook it for 30 to 40 minutes now with this particular one I checked it at 30 minutes and it wasn't quite cooked so I just gave it another five minutes so it probably had about 35 minutes in total. What you do is just take it out and stick a knife into the middle of the bread and butter pudding and if it's still got quite a lot of liquid on the knife or it seems quite soft in the middle it probably needs a little bit longer to cook. And that's it, bread and butter pu pudding. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time on Cooking with Debs. Welcome to Cooking with Debs and Sophia. And today we are making a very easy recipe that might be something that scared you in the past because it's lots of people get scared by this, but it's really not scary. We are making some jam. However, we are making jam with a difference. We are not making jars and jars and jars of jam. We are using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strawberries which have been sat in my fridge for too long. The kids don't want to eat them. I've got half a lemon that is looking, to be honest, a little bit sad. And some sugar that's in a jar that says caster sugar, but it's a complete lie because it's just granulated sugar. This is your zero waste jam. This is jam when you've got some fruit that's got a bit tired and you're thinking, I don't know what to do with that. I don't want to throw it away. Um, you've got fed up of eating crumble for the hundredth time in the week. Maybe that's just us with the rhubarb. Um, so I'm just going to chop these strawberries up. Okay. 
sorry, so if I could have got you to do this. Could you squeeze the lemon for me? We'll see how much lemon we get out of that half a lemon. Um, we can always add a little bit of our trusty lemon in a thing that isn't really zero waste, but It's a very juicy lemon. It is, oh excellent. Okay, last thing I need to do, actually, I can do it straight here in the pan. Really, really easy, don't need to mess up anything else. So I'm gonna weigh how many grams of strawberries I've got. I've got 153. Now, for ease sake, I'm gonna just say that's 150. I'm gonna zero the scale, and you can pour in 150 grams of sugar. So is that one zero? So one five zero, yeah? Right, sometimes we work in ounces, sometimes we work in grams, so she was just checking what the, script, the scale was gonna read out. Okay, keep going. So the reason we put the lemon juice is that it helps to set the jam. If you don't have it, it's fine. You can make it without it. You just may end up with a slightly runnier jam. Or you can also add a bit of apple. Apple is really good um, for it because it contains a lot of pectin. So that helps jam to set. So when I made rhubarb jam for the first time, it was really runny. So the second batch, I made rhubarb and apple jam and that was perfect. So we've got the strawberries, an equal weight of sugar, and we've got lemon juice. I'm gonna to go to the tap and just get a little splash of water and then we'll go over to the hob. Okay, so I've got it on the heat and I'm just gonna, every so often, just keep stirring it. We want to dissolve the sugar. So as it heats up, the sugar will dissolve into the liquid and you won't be able to feel any more grainy bits anymore. If I was making a big batch of jam, what I would do at the moment is I would put the oven on to about 100. I would wash my jars in hot soapy water. I would carefully dry the lids with a clean tea towel and the jars would go in the oven for at least 10 minutes. Quite often it ends up being like 20, half an hour. Um, but that sterilizes them and means that there aren't any germs in there. Because we're just making a little batch today, um, we'll probably just put it in a little pot and it'll be gone within a couple of days. Turn the heat down slightly. And just set it, just stir it every so often and let it simmer away. Um, you often get this froth on the top of jam and what you can do is add just a little bit of butter and the fat sort of disperses the foam. But if you want to do that, I'd, I'd do it at the end of the cooking because sometimes the foam will just disperse itself. Um, now this is a bit of a weird one, but as you're cooking, you should be able to feel that as you stir it, the, the mixture's getting thicker. And when it's got thicker and um, it's, it's like decreased in size a bit, the amount of it that there is has lessened. <laughs> I'm really bad at describing this. Um, you'll be able to test to see whether you think it's ready. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I stepped away from the jam for a little while and it did start to catch on the bottom of the saucepan. So I've tipped it into another saucepan. But just so you know, it happens to the best of us. Um, so you can see that the jam has got thicker. And this is a cold saucer from the fridge. And I'm just gonna take a little spoonful tip it onto the cold saucer and then let it cool a bit. You can put it back in the fridge but actually I don't think we need to. When you push it you can see that this isn't quite ready. When it's ready there will be like a skin on the top of the jam and if you push it with your finger, it will wrinkle. So I'm just gonna give this probably one more minute because it's such a small amount of jam. And I won't bother testing again, but you can test as many times as you need to. This, this, where it is now, 
that would be a sort of runny set down. I'll just give it one more minute and then I'm going to tip it into my jar. Sometimes I will actually ladle it into a measuring jug and then pour from the measuring jug because liquid jam is very hot and you really do need to be careful. And so that's it, just pop the lid on and then this jam will be perfect with our Scones recipe. I can't remember if we've made a plain scone recipe. I know we made a cheese one, which probably you wouldn't want to use strawberry jam with. Um, but with some plain scones, or in our um, flapjack jam sandwich recipe as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon. another episode of Cooking with Debs. Today we're going to play Challenge Debs. I've grabbed three things out of my cupboard which I reckon that you might have in your cupboard and I'm going to give you a few ideas of things that you can do with them. Let me start with the noodles because obviously the other day we made spaghetti pie. Um, there's another video that we can link to in the comments below um, but basically I took leftover noodles some of my um, vegetable sauce which also has its own video mix them together with some sausages stuck some cheese on the top and wax it in the oven so that's recipe one um, obviously you can make yourself a nice stir fry and just boil the noodles and for whatever it says on the packet i think they say about four minutes and then saute whatever veg you've got in your fridge you can also throw in things out of tins for example beans or sweet corn and then mix them all together um, you can experiment with different flavours. Ginger is a lovely one in stir fries. Um, obviously garlic, we love garlic in this house. A bit of soy sauce. Um, another thing you can do with noodles is put them in a soup. So um, chicken noodle soup springs to mind, but there's also um, other, like a sort of more tomato -y sauce um, soup. And again, that can be used with leftovers. Soups are really good for throwing leftovers in. I've got a tin of humble chickpeas as my second item and um, the first recipe that springs to mind is hummus and um, they're really good in homemade hummus and you can add different flavours to that as well and um, pop a bit of paprika or a little bit of chilli powder to give your hummus a bit of a kick and um, secondly um, a recipe I used to love making all the time don't know why I don't make it now but um, pita pockets and take some chickpeas and some garlic and fry them together until they're kind of crispy and yummy and then put them in the pit pockets pit pockets can't talk and eat them for lunch maybe with a bit of salad um, another thing you can do with chickpeas is you can use the aquafaba liquid to make meringues so that's pretty cool as well i also throw these in loads of things like a sausage casserole or soups um, anything to kind of just bulk it out, um, reduce the amount of meat you're using. So they're brilliant. And my final item for today is some sage and onion stuffing. Now, obviously you can follow the instructions on the mix and make like stuffing balls or put it in a, um, like a flat dish and make stuffing like that. Other things you can do with stuffing, you can use it as your outside for things like chicken nuggets. So you could um, get your pieces of chicken, dip them in some flour, dip them in some egg, dip them in the stuffing. You've got a lovely crispy coating. You could do that with all sorts of different things. You could also use this in a recipe, for example, in um, a meatloaf or in some burgers where you might use breadcrumbs. Um, so a recipe that needs something to sort of um, soak up some of the moisture mix it all together. So that's it, we've got noodles, chickpeas 
and stuffy mix please let me know what you'd like me to talk about next week and i'll give it a go come up with some interesting meals for the things that are stuck at the back of your cupboards lovely to see you hope to see you soon bye episode of cooking with Debs. Today I'm making a recipe that takes me right back to my childhood. Um, I bought a new recipe book the other day and as I was turning the pages I found this recipe and I just thought I've got to make that on cooking with Debs and it's called Melting Moments. So in here I've got 100 grams of margarine or you can use butter but you just need to make sure that it's a bit softened and I'm going to add 80 grams of sugar. This is just ordinary granulated. And I'm just going to beat them together until they're soft and fluffy. I've also got a few drops of vanilla essence. Extract, vanilla extract. I'm going to add into that one egg. In. And then we need some flour. I've got self raising flour and we need 160 grams of self raising flour. 160 grams of self raising flour. Okay, now this should all come into a dough that you can mould with your hands. My egg was a medium egg. If you're using a large egg, you might need to um, increase the flour a little bit. Just mix it together and see how it feels. I've got my oven preheated to um, about 180 degrees, which is about gas hot four. Um, my oven tends to run a little bit hot, so. Um, you could cook it slightly hotter at gas mark 5 or 190. Well, I'm just going to try and bring it together with my hands. And I'm going to roll, roll this into small balls and then roll it into the oats. So that's why you need it to be a little bit sticky so that the oats will stick to it. And then onto a greased baking tray and I'll show you what to do. And I'm just cutting some glacé cherries in half and they'll go onto the top of the cookies. Okay, so take a little ball, roll it all over in the oats. Get it nice and covered. Pop it onto the grease and grease baking tray, flatten it down a little bit and pop a bit of glacé cherry in the middle and then continue until you've done them all. Now we don't always show you these shots because um, we usually just put photographs at the end but I just wanted to show you um, my biscuits that remind me of my grandma and I'm going to pop one on the plate that used to be my grandma and granddad's. Thanks for watching. Oh, they took about 14 minutes in my oven. So somewhere between 10 and 15, just to have a little check on them and see if they look done. Welcome to Cooking with Debs and Sophia. And today we're just making a really quick oven baked frittata. Okay, I'm going to start with some leftover sauteed onion. I cooked this earlier but didn't need these ones um, for the potato dolphin rolls dish that we made. So you'll pop them in there. 
spread them around. So could you give those eggs a mix with the fork for me? Next up, next up I've got some um, cubed gammon, it's a leftover from a joint that we had yesterday. I've got a tomato that I've cut up, I've drained some of the juice off so there's not too much excessive juice. You could use um, peppers, you can use any bits and pieces, any meat, you could put bacon in there. Um, anything that you might put in a quiche, you could put in this frittata. And then finally, I've got some cooked potatoes. It is important that you cook them first um, or use leftovers because otherwise they won't get cooked enough in the frittata. Pour them over, probably don't need all of these. Meanwhile, Sophie has cracked, we've got four eggs in there so far. Um, I never like to say, okay, it's this many eggs, because it really depends on how big your, um, your dish is. I've got a pie dish here. We're gonna add in a little bit of pepper. Um, I'm not gonna put any salt in because the gammon was quite salty, but you can add salt if you haven't got any meat in there. I'm gonna add a little dash of cream because we've got some that needs using. I'm not measuring, I'm just pouring. Um, you could use milk instead of cream if you haven't got milk. If you haven't got cream, use milk. And I'm gonna put, I might put a few more potatoes in. Make it really hearty. And the top the cheese on the top. This is going to go into an oven. Uh, 350 Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius for Gas Mark 4. Again, that was just the end of a piece of cheese. I didn't measure it, I just grated what we had. And I'm going to pour this egg mixture on, but I think we may need a bit more. Yeah, I reckon. Can you crack those last two eggs? Now? put the herbs in so I'm going to add some herbs into this now. So you just want everything covered, fizzle it around a little bit, lovely. Um, yeah, pop this into the oven. Um, as I said, it depends on how big the dish is. I'm going to start probably with about 25 minutes and then see if it's set. You can give it a little bit longer if you need to. Or if you've got a lot more eggs, go for a little bit longer to start with. And then we'll show you a picture when it's done. making chocolate orange muffins. Um, now this orange I have had in boiling water in a saucepan and I have actually simmered it for an hour, the entire orange. I've cut it in half now and I need to take out the pips. Try and get that. Try and get all the pips out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it in our ninja bullet and we're gonna blend it up with the skin and everything. Um, you can put it in your food processor, whatever you've got. Then we've got some self-raising flour, and we're gonna have 
a cup and a half of self-raising flour. And I'm just gonna add about half a teaspoon of baking powder. If you want to use, um, if you want to use plain flour, you can um, just increase the baking powder maybe to a teaspoon and a half. And I also need um, half a cup of sugar in there. Yeah. So we've got all the pips out here. Looks good. Couldn't see any. Mm. I'm pop that into. Oh, you have skin in it. Well. Yeah, it's got skin and everything. Just one cup. Um, yeah, that's one half cup. Where's the blade? I haven't got the blade. Could you crack the egg in there for me? I've got everybody doing things today. Well, that was very loud. It's very loud. It's very hot as well. I'm also going to add in this applesauce. Um, I think it's somewhere between a third and a half cup. She says vaguely. Um, a little tip for you there. What I did was um, one day when the fruit pot was looking a bit sad, there was some apples and pears in there that had just gone a little bit wrinkly. Um, I stewed them and then I blended them in the blender and then froze them in little pots. Um, and I use them in recipes like these muffins where instead of using um, melted butter or oil, I put in the applesauce. So it's increasing the fruit content and also it's reducing the calorie amount of the recipe. Um, yeah. Right, um, I think we need to let that cool a bit because otherwise it's gonna cook the egg. Do you wanna spread that bit out? Right, so in here we've got flour and sugar and baking powder, and we need um, a couple of spoonfuls of cocoa. How many? Um, two spoonfuls, maybe? That's what we're going to make them chocolate orange. One. Just allow the orange and apple mix to cool down because we're going to add it to the egg and we didn't want to cook the egg. So would you like to tip that into there? Or actually, you can tip that into there. No, tip that into there. So we've got all the dry ingredients here. We've got all the wet ingredients there. And we're just going to combine the two together. And then the last thing I'm going to put in is, it's about a third of a cup of currants, but any dried fruit would work. And I've just had it soaking in a couple of spoonfuls of the um, orange water that, from where I boiled the oranges. Right, that'll do so. You all right? <laughs> We've um, got a preheated oven to 180 degrees centigrade, which is 350 Fahrenheit. And we're gonna cook these in silicon muffin cases, but you could use paper cases, or if you're using a tin, just make sure you grease it first. You ready? Yeah. Right, we're going to put that into here. I'll fold that into And then you can put them in there. If you don't want to use dried fruit, you can add um, chocolate chunks because that would add to the chocolate orangeness. Yeah, you can throw them in. Yeah. Just put it all in? Just throw it in, it's fine. This mixture is quite dry, so what we'll do when it's a bit more mixed is we will just add some of the water because it's got lovely orange oils in it. I'm going to bring the sauce pan. Yeah, it's fine. Do you want 
Um, you can just add like a spoonful at a time. Keep going? Yeah. Sounds lovely. And I'm just going to spoon that into the muffin cases. I just take a large heat dessert spoon and then we'll just fill them all up. Do you want to go for it? And we'll just put these in the oven for about 20 minutes. And we'll show you what they look like when they're done. Thanks for watching. Bye. Cooking with Debs and so and today we are making strawberry jam sandwiches flapjack. But there are no sandwiches in this recipe. Yeah. We are starting with um. Do you know what? There's a lot of numbers here, so I'm just going to type the recipe out in the um, info below the video. So we've got oats and we've got plain flour and baking powder. Just stick that in. Now this is a recipe that you can easily make um, allergy friendly, although my friend Evie would not be able to eat it in this version because it's got coconut in, but she could use a different oil. We've got, I'm using some normal, um, perfect for cakes cooking margarine, but if you wanted to make it um, allergy friendly or vegan, you could put in some Vitalite or some Pure or another dairy free. So we've got margarine, put that in. I've got some coconut oil. We've got some applesauce. Get the honey out of the cup. I forgot to get the honey out. You can use our dandelion honey. I've got brown sugar. Right, so technically honey is not vegan, but if you use this, which is dandelion honey, it would be vegan. You need a tablespoon of that, but I don't have a tablespoon in hand, so I'm gonna stick in a couple of spoonfuls of that. Um, so we've got oats, flour, baking powder, or you could use self-raising flour instead of frozen flour. We've got coconut oil, we've got brown sugar, we've got margarine, we've got honey, let's mix, and apple sauce. Can you give it a mix? Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to mix it up to be a nice um, dough mix, whatever it is, um, completely mixed up. Then we're going to put half in the tin and then we're going to spread strawberry jam on it and then put cover over the other half. So that's what makes it a strawberry jam sandwich. Oh, it's coming together lovely. Now, those of you watching carefully will notice I've had a bit of tin indecision. I'm going to go for this tin. Just, it didn't mention greasing, but I just think it's always a good idea to grease. So we need about half of this mixture. I'm gonna roughly divide it. And then can you spread that like all over the base of the tin? will be quite thin but because it's got the flour and the raising agent in it should puff up a bit when you bake it. The recipe says four tablespoons of jam to go in between. Um, I would suggest 
use your eye and see what you think. Do you want to use that spoon and spread it out a bit? Please remember when you're baking that this jam in the middle is going to get really really hot. So when you take it out of the oven you need to let it cool for a little while um, before you slice into it and serve it. Oh, and talking about the oven, um, I've preheated it to 180 degrees C, which is gas mark 4, or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you think a little bit more? Yeah. Okay. The great thing about homemade strawberry jam is that it has proper lumps of strawberry in it. Does that look good? Yeah. Good. You could use any type of jam, it doesn't have to be strawberry jam, use whatever your favourite is. But I'm going to go for dropping little balls of this on the top, and then I think it'll be easier to spread it out. There we go, it's ready for the oven.